Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and today we're going to show you how to do something that's both fun and cool. We're going to take a flash animation, and we're going to turn it into action script. So let's bring a cube or square out on the stage, and let's turn it into an animation, and then let's turn it into action script. So grab a cube, or square, excuse me, uh, hit the shift key, and you can just bring it open at, uh, at the same proportion. And we're going to double click on this with the uh, cursor right click and go to convert symbol below can't see it there but that's what I went to and hit my square okay and hit okay so now you have this uh, square on the stage and you're gonna animate it so what we're gonna do is go to frame 25 I think or right, here we go right click and let's uh, insert a keyframe I'm going to remove one, so I want to be right at frame 25 because we're going to come back and look at the code and you'll see why I need that. I'm going to right click on the timeline and hit create motion tween. And there's my motion tween. Let's go ahead and put another uh, tween keyframe in there just for uh, animation's sake. And so we'll create another, we'll insert a keyframe here. And so now we can move our cube around. So we'll actually bring our cube up this way. So when it starts the animation, it goes up and then we'll have it spin down. So go to the last frame and we'll bring it over here. We'll actually uh, rotate a little bit and shrink it just a little bit. There you go. And so the full animation looks like this. Up and rotate over. Now let's go ahead and select this animation by clicking on one frame. Hold down the shift key and click on the other. And then right click uh, in the center anywhere and go copy motion as action script 3. And what we want to do is use the this because we'll be referring to the cube itself or the square itself. So hit OK. And now you're done. So I'll create another layer and I'll just delete, I'll delete the scrap layer. And let's get rid of that as well. So what I have now is a square in the library. I'm going to double click on that and paste this animation code into the square's timeline. So let's bring the square out. Here's my library. Let's just double click on the square uh, to get its timeline. There we go. And let's create a layer and bring out my actions panel. And let's right click and paste all that code right in the actions panel. And this is incredible code. I just love this. I love XML. And I want to go ahead and add an import statement at the beginning because I'm going to want to interact with this code through what's called a motion event. Now, to find out about all the events, we're going to go with this, this animator class. That's everything we need to know about the motion tween. And, but first, let's go ahead and import this statement, and we'll do a little bit of coding here and talk about the code below. fl.motion. And I want to interact using a motion event. Now the code is XML and it just brings it right into the animator uh, file or method and it begins to execute it. So, this is, so there's some initial statements here that in a sense initialize the uh, XML and then below are the keyframes that we created. And there's three keyframes, one, two, three, and if you remember one keyframe was at index zero, the other at the uh, index nine, and the last one at index 24. And so what happens is you start off in this initial tween Then what we did is we just moved everything up a position Y minus 46. So remember we moved the cube up. And then we moved the cubes X and Y. We scaled it down X and Y, but we also rotated it. So this is really simple. I mean, to do what it's doing and to be able to represent it in XML so simply, it's just fantastic. Now let's interact with this animation. So what we're going to do is actually create a listener. So we'll take this... Uh, this.animator, that's the name that was created by the code. We'll just add an event listener. And in that add listener, we have a motion event. And let's go ahead and the event occur on the end of the emotion. So we, there's a number of emotions that we can choose from. We'll go motion end. And we'll create a function. We'll just call it do something. And now let's create that function. So we have our do, fu do something function here. Let's go ahead and uh, paste it. Copy and paste it. 
so we don't make a spelling error. Good. And we'll go function, do something. Void. Open up your brackets. And the event is a event. Motion event. And we're just going to pull it off the stage at the end of the animation. So we'll go this dot parent dot remove child and the child is this. And you're done. So now that this is done, we can go ahead and uh, just pull this out because it's in the library. Go back to our main timeline. Let's go ahead and grab our library symbol and put it on the stage. Okay, we can get out of this now. And let's run the program, see what happens. And there's our animation, and it disappears. It doesn't last very long because we're running at 25 frames a second, but you can get the gist of what's going on here. Now let's go back and take a look at the class and see all the cool things we can do. So I'm going to double-click on this. We're going to bring up this code right here, so let's hit Windows Actions. And what we can do is go ahead and put your cursor right in the animator and hit F1 on your keyboard. Now in Flex, you can do the same thing, but you hit F2. And what that will do is take you to the help, or actually the animator class. So I'm looking at the animator class right now. And this is just an incredible class. And uh, you can see it's got a bunch of methods with it. Motion, orient to path, position, repeat, end, from XML, string, next frame, pause, play, resume, rewind, stop. I mean, this is great stuff. You can run it just like the playhead of a regular animation. And it has some listeners here, motion end, motion start, motion update, and time change. So if you want to know more about this class, just hit the, uh, you know, click on the uh, animator and hit the F1 key, and that will take you right to the uh, class so you can take a look at it and learn more. But what we're going to see as we move on with the uh, open source Flex Gumbo, you actually have access to actually look at this class, actually modify it and change it. So we'll look at that in the future. I want to just show this to you real quick. Let's do one more thing. When I ran my animation, it was really fast. It was hard to see. So what should I do? Should I just recreate the animation? Should I change my timeline? No, let's just go right into the code itself, modify it, and run it again. So I'll go to Actions. Hit F9 to go to Actions. What I want to do is slow down the animation. So right now we can see the frame right here at the beginning of the XML. As I said earlier, this initializes the XML or the animation. And one of the quantities here is frame rate. Let's change that to 12 frames a second. And let's come down here and make the animation a little longer. So let's take the first frame to frame 19. That's the first keyframe. And the second keyframe to frame 100. Now that should lengthen things quite a bit. So I'll go ahead and save that. And let's control test it. And now you can see you have total control over what's happening. So without even having to go back into the timeline, I was able to slow things down and make it last longer. So this is pretty cool stuff. And if you're used to ActionScript 3 now, you know you're doing a lot of coding as opposed to the animation that we used to do in Flash 7 and 8. And uh, so get used to these classes and working with these functions. This is a great one.